you can't really, I don't think you could ever explain it if you've never experienced it. It ain't an easy job. The speed, the adrenaline that you get with the speed of it, it can be mentally tiring as well as physically. The pressure, the, the key points within the communication, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's just intense. And time just kind of goes very quickly as well. I mean, a lot of people react to pressure and they might get very, they might get very angry, they might um, get very quiet, they might just walk out and leave. You might go through a lot of stress and long hours, but it's the final product you come out with. Plating that food that you've cooked and know someone's enjoying it. You know when people meet you, they're like, oh, so what do you want to do with your life? I hated not ever having an answer and people said, oh, what is it you do? And I didn't work and I didn't, I felt like that pressure of just having an answer may, makes you feel so worthless. Like, I didn't want to just be someone that went and got a job in New Look because I had to work. I feel like I had a, a really good childhood, you know, there was a lot of nice people on my estate. I didn't do well in, in school, I went to college, didn't do well in college, had to retake a year, then I tried to go into an access course at uni, didn't do very well there and, you know, I just I kept, kept finding the same repetitive thing happening. I think I was more relying on people around me as well and not focusing on, on the main objectives, you understand? It was more like I was with the crowd and I was with my friends. My attitude was just rubbish. It was completely rubbish. I was so antisocial. It was unbelievable. I was hard to talk to, hard to interact with. Um, like a spoiled little brat in a way. I was just so stubborn. And I think it was a lot to do with my self-esteem and confidence at the time. I went into foster care at a young age and um, left foster care at 18. Um, I was getting in so much trouble um, with the police and involved in gangs and that that I didn't really have any options at the time. I went into my care home, my placement at three years old, and I stayed there until 14. I never knew the reason why I was in care until I was 13. So you grow up for all them years just thinking, why am I in this position? Like I remember being in school and like, People not like people being really inquisitive and wanting to know why you're in care and you don't even have them answers yourself and everyone having a mum and dad and you not knowing why you don't have a mum and dad. So then you just sort of grow up thinking that you're owed for some reason. I've had a problem with my attitude from school days. Like I got excluded from school, I got excluded from college. Um, Vying was my solution to everything. I wasn't good with words. I couldn't express myself without being angry. I felt like... I didn't know where I was at. I didn't want to feel like I was just doing nothing, you know? I wanted to still like, feel like, yeah, I'm still trying, you know what I mean? I'm not giving up. I don't want to almost feel like I'm letting my mum down. Even if it's not something I want to do, I just, I just wanted to make sure my mum was happy, you know? I didn't want to go down the route that I just saw everyone else going down, being unemployed, just signing on, and I feel like that was the biggest thing as well. Like When I turned 18, in order for me to get my housing benefit, I had to sign on, and that made me feel like so worthless, like going to the job centre and just seeing all these people that aren't able to work signing on, and then I'm just here so capable, like, what am I doing with my life? Before Blue Marble Training, I literally wasn't doing anything. I was just like hanging around with my friends. I was living on my own, um, just living that sort of carefree life. I think going back to prison kind of woke me up a lot and made me really decide what I wanted to do. I could never see myself being like in an office environment, I never really liked school growing up, so every day I wake up and I'm just happy that I'm going to work to work in the kitchen. It's the difference between just going to do a job that you 
to, you think that's just a job and then there's a difference of kind of job that you love doing because it comes more of a hobby. It was difficult, for, it can be difficult for a lot of people but personally for me um, it was more, it wasn't the work that I was going to find hard, it was the interaction with people and a group of people that you wouldn't you wouldn't have known or you wouldn't have spent time with so it's like basically going to a new school you're scared of it or you might be a bit worried about talking to certain people but you get used to it after a while two pieces of bacon each yeah or okay. one piece Where's Josh? <laughs> no, sausages. no sausages unfortunately <laughs> why don't you want eggs josh? i don't eat eggs bro i'll put it out for josh then innit poaching 500 eggs Nice. <laughs> Purchase an FDM, mate. I, I've never had a poacher from none of you guys, man. No. Oh, what the hell. Um, you need to have I'm more always it's, it's all about your team and who you work with and I know there's certain people if I go into Waterhouse I'm never going to have a good day because they're on and you just lift each other up and you just sort of bounce with each other. It is a very hard job and there are days that you go in and you're fucking tired and you need that someone to just be like yeah come on let's do this. Da, 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 da. Yeah it's a lifestyle I'd definitely say. It's, it, it's, it's a lot of work. I mean the time you go home you go sleep and you wake up, you're basically back at work, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, you spend most of your time with them people and like I said, they, it becomes like family and you you do have the odd occasions where people have the, the dramas and that, but that, that's because everybody like has the that, that caring feeling for people, you know, because we are so close and everybody spends a lot of time in there. When I, before I was a chef, I was never open to try anything. Becoming a chef, I realised you cannot be closed-minded to food, like you have to try things. If you're really passionate about food, then it'll, it's just a, it's one of them things of, if, if you're a car maniac, get to drive a Bugatti or something like that, it's that experience, it's, it makes you thrive for it, it makes you want to do it more and more. So you start by coming into the kitchen and then you'll, you'll start on larder, which is sort of the basic part of the kitchen. Washing the salad, prepping like um, the vegetables. You don't have to come with actually any sort of knowledge. You don't have to know how to chop, you don't have to know what goes well together, but you just want to have to learn. You'll eventually see how service works and you'll see the fast pace to it and then that's the sort of time where you think, is this for me? Do I like this pressure? I don't think it's for everyone. I think you have to have certain skills already in you. That journey of starting from the bottom to the top is where you realise what it is that you like to do. The kitchen runs with the two head chefs and then we've got the advanced trainees and then we've got like the trainees that are coming up to advanced trainees and we maybe have like a few more that have just come in and uh, it's like everybody's there to help each other, it's, it's like a system. You, you go there, you learn and you teach. Communication is the biggest thing and that's why you wouldn't start off at HOTS because you've got to build that um, confidence up to be able to have that voice because you have to have a very loud stern voice in the kitchen like you can't just be in the background because there's so many confident chefs, you know what I mean? They do definitely shout at you sometimes, but that's the real experience of a kitchen. You're going to get shouted at if someone's waiting for food and you're taking five minutes. They're going to shout at you, where's this food? It happens, but it's just understanding that they're here to do a job and so are you. Service, please. We want these two uh, coffers that are on the grill, yeah? Yes, chef. Oui. Lovely. You've got that mint yoghurt there, yeah? Oh, no, 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 no. Mint yoghurt, a little bit of lemon, please, yeah? yeah. That's ready? Three bowls, yeah? Alright guys, next can I have uh, one coffee, one broccoli, one green, one sweet potatoes please? Broom's coming up to you now, Chef. Please. Service please. How long for my two cam my one broccoli? Service please. How long are the ribs and pop up? Guys, can we just communicate a little bit better please? Just stay close together but push it at the same time. Alright, Chef. It just literally gave me a routine. I've learned, I think, all the life skills, that I, all the important life skills that I'm going to need in order to pursue my goals and, yeah, just the right, having the right mind frame, 
I think I didn't have it at 16. I don't think I knew who I was. Yeah, my personality is changing so much. It's just opened up a wide like range. I just talk to so many different people that I would never thought I'd ever interact with, and just it's just changed so much. Really, it's quite difficult to put it into emotions and words. But um... what you realise is that friends will come and go. You know, they will because it's all about you. You know, once you haven't got nothing and you're flat and you're asked. No one really wants to know you and you just gotta build yourself up and you do have to put a lot of, of of hard hard work into it, you know, you've got to do your best at things. You can't kinda slack around and 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 expect things to get done for you. You've got to proceed in the jobs you're doing and just try your best. And if you know you're giving it your all then you shouldn't have a problem, you know, you'll you'll be welcomed and Everybody, I'm sure, will show you the right direction within the kitchen. Handling pressure, I used to be... I used to, I didn't handle it in a way, I used to just kind of hide it. It used to be hard to hold in for so long that when I used to react, it's a build-up of pressure and stress that's built up for so long. But now I can talk about things a lot easier, that I don't have to bottle that pressure up. I can, talk about situation. When I've got a well-run service and I feel like the food's gone out on time, yeah, that, that, that makes me happy. I feel, I feel good about things. I feel like, yeah, today was a good day. Like, and everybody, I, I think, feels that sense of achievement as well. It's like, a, it's like a pat on the back. It's like, yeah, we done good. Like. It makes you feel like home after. It makes you feel like you're in a family. Just the bond that you have within um, Shoreditch Trust and Blue Marble. It made me more interact with people, so I was doing a lot more going out socially, doing sports and fitness. Um, my eating pattern completely changed, made me eat a lot more. What am I trying to avoid? Going back to the life I had before. That's the main thing I'm trying to avoid. And I suppose it's been that way probably ever since I started blooming on training. It's just got easier as it gets along. I think I have loads of fears, but my biggest fear is not accomplishing all the things that I know that I can in life. I think that's just my biggest fear. If you feel like something's new to you and you're afraid, don't worry, you know, just go through with it and you might enjoy it. completely changed my life. Um, from what I was doing, from hanging around in gangs to going into a work, but days of work and doing actually something with my, with my actual life, it made me feel a lot better, so it can change it, can change it completely. I wouldn't say it changed it instantly, but um, after a couple of months, I would say it stopped me from doing any sort of bad behavior or crime that I was getting involved in. It's given me self-worth as well, like, that if I don't go into work, things won't work, so it makes you know your importance as well, and just being part of a team and knowing that you, you're needed somewhere, it's the most priceless feeling that nothing could ever give you.